Hello there everybody, it is Mephizer Bunny, and welcome back to another Synth for Speed build. So today we are back with yet another Japanese inspired speed build. This time I decided to build this in Sulani because we are actually building a traditional Japanese boathouse, also known as an Ine no Funaya. And for this build, I wanted to take advantage of the aspect where we can build on water. And that feature only comes with Zulani, so I had to do this build in this world. And having said that, I've been wanting to do this build ever since Snowy Escape came out. Afunaya is definitely one of the builds that I really wanted to recreate because they're such a unique building and I thought that gameplay wise they would be very interesting to live in as well. So here we are. Um, first of all though, happy December to all of you. Um, I know it's been over two weeks since my last video and I think I briefly mentioned about this in my previous builds but I have been busy working overtime on a construction project that I'm involved with. I was mainly involved in the planning for said project and thankfully most of that is done. We did have to work overtime for the past month or so just to get that done and that project did operate on a very very tight deadline so that pretty much took up most of my time for the past couple of weeks but now I have a little bit more spare time to work on builds and I'm also really looking forward to getting a break for the holidays as well so yeah. I've tweeted about this recently, but I can't believe we are so close to Christmas. It doesn't feel like it, but you know, 2020 has been a very unusual year, so yeah, I'm not even surprised. But Funaya, before I get carried away, are these very unique kind of house that can be found in the village of Ine in the north of Kyoto. That's why they're also called Ine no Funaya because um, they come from that specific village and they have a very interesting history as well. I'm going to base a lot of what I'm going to say off of a Twitter discussion because I found it very hard to actually find any resources in English for this particular house but I did find a Twitter discussion which I will probably share if I can still find it. I'm going to retweet it and I'm going to put a link to it in the description for those of you who are interested to know more about this house. They started building Funaya in the 16th century as boat houses. They basically started as extensions for um, fishermen's houses and eventually they got renovated. People started adding an upper floor to serve as an extra residential area for extended family members or for you know family members who are starting out and who are in need of a house um, which is what basically created this very interesting layout of having kind of like a boat garage on the ground floor and a residential area on the upper floor and this build pretty much follows that exact same floor plan um, I definitely went for a more rustic aesthetic for this build, even though a lot of funaya have recently been renovated as ryokan, which are traditional Japanese inns. Um, I definitely want to recreate one eventually, like I would definitely like to do like a guest house in the future that's maybe a little bit more contemporary. So yeah, let me know if you want to see it. I would definitely like to recreate it as well. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, it's been a pretty eventful week for the community. We finally got the skin tone fix, which is very exciting. I know a lot of people have been looking forward to that. I'm so happy that they finally fixed the skin tone because it made such a huge difference to actually have the sliders and the different shades available. So that is very, very highly appreciated on my part. I have also gotten into the hobby of collecting anime figures. For those of you who follow me on Twitter, you've probably already seen them. I've been posting a lot of them. Basically, I have been really into collecting Nendoroids. And if you guys don't know, Nendoroids are very pricey. But this month, I kind of went overboard with my collecting because I ordered 7 Nendoroids. Yeah, needless to say, it's a very expensive hobby, but it's also really satisfying as well. I just really enjoy the feeling of seeing, you know, some of my favorite anime characters and yeah, it's it's great. I definitely would love to talk more about that if I get the chance in a future build or maybe even do a showcase of my whole Nendroid collection if you're interested. Anyway, like I said, for this build, I did go for a more rustic aesthetic, which is why I'm using a lot of worn out textures, a lot of worn out woods, and also I use a lot of that um, metal texture from Strangerville. That's pretty much the only reason why I use Strangerville for this build, because I really, really wanted to use that metal texture just to give this place more of a rustic vibe. Obviously, um, I also wanted to use a lot of nautical decorations as well. So a lot of the boats from Cats and Dogs I used and also a lot of like fishing decorations from Cats and Dogs as well. Unfortunately for Island Living, I didn't get to use a lot of items because Island Living had more of a tropical vibe that I felt like didn't really go with the whole Japanese aesthetic. You'll see later on in the video, I will actually be placing decorations around this lot just to make it look like it's in Japan. Also throughout this house, I left some like, I guess nautical references if you get what I mean. Like I put some fish artwork. So yeah, go ahead and look for those. I definitely left in those easter eggs as a reference to the fact that this is a fisherman's house. Uh, speaking of that, by the way, I definitely imagined this for maybe an older couple. Um, the house itself has two tatami rooms upstairs, but there's really only one bedroom. Over here, we're actually furnishing kind of like the boat garage. I put some coolers and some crates over here to store fish and also some nets. I definitely preferred using these boats from Cats and Dogs because they looked a little bit more like the boats you would see in Japan as opposed to the tropical outrigger boats that we would see in the Pacific Islands which are the only boats that are available in The Sims 4 unfortunately. I wish they gave us a more versatile like contemporary looking boat something that's maybe less traditional but yeah they didn't um so yeah we're stuck with those tropical outrigger boats from Sulani so if you really wanted to make this a functional house you can probably put in one of those boats as well also I put a clothes washer um, I actually forgot to put a clothesline. Well, technically I didn't. I put a decorative clothesline. It's one of the ones that came with Island Living. Um, I didn't actually put a functional clothesline. So the one I put, you might want to replace it with the actual functional clothesline. Just a heads up for that. But I'm really, really happy with how the boat garage turned out. It's also where I decided to put the kitchen area because like I said, upstairs is mainly like the living area and downstairs is probably where the kitchen is. I actually didn't see a floor plan that had a kitchen for some reason, um, but 
I assume it's in the ground floor because you wouldn't have a kitchen in the tatami room, right? Because most of the upstairs is just basically a tatami room, so... I think it's a pretty reasonable assumption to assume that the kitchen is located in the ground floor. I'm really really happy with how this upstairs came together as well actually. It does feel very traditional and very appropriate for the type of person that I imagine living here. Here I'm actually doing these closets away from the house just because I find it easier to furnish them away from the house itself so I can actually see what I'm doing. So yeah, I just put in some, you know, hanging clothes and some futons over here because uh, typically that's what Japanese people would have in their homes. Um, this house actually doesn't have like an actual closet. I forgot to put one. I thought I put one that came with university but then I realized eventually that the thing I placed wasn't actually a closet. It was one of those storage... storage boxes I guess. So yeah, I, I mistakenly thought that that was a closet, but it wasn't apparently. But there is a mirror, so if you want to give your sim a makeover, you can always do that as well. Here we are furnishing kind of like the main living area, and I just filled it with so much clutter. It's really funny, but yeah, I really really like how cluttered this build came out. Um, it feels very lived in, it feels like a generation's home, which is always great. Um, also, please excuse all of the traffic noise outside. For some reason, there is a lot of traffic right now. Um, I tried to time this build to make sure that, you know, there won't be a lot of traffic noise, but yeah, it's, it is what it is. Also, I'm not sure if you've noticed, but a lot of the artwork I used in this build was actually rotated in some way using the tool mod as well um, because, you know, I just really wanted to have that more, um, you know, unkempt vibe. And the bedroom itself has a bed from Eco Lifestyle, which is supposed to be a futon. Uh, and I actually really liked how this bedroom turned out. I'm using a lot of coffee tables as like, you know, desks. <laughs> I use one of these coffee tables from Snowy Escape as a desk. Obviously it doesn't work as a desk, but I put one of the meditation chairs in front of it just to make it look like the sim is actually using that table. Um, and yeah, I think this is actually one of my favorite rooms in the house, the main bedroom, just because I like the color scheme. I like the minimalism vibe of it as well. So yeah. Here you can finally see me decorate the exterior of this build and these are items that I'm actually placing outside of the lot and in order to do that I had to use the tool mod. And I think I'm going to do a similar technique and I'm definitely going to do a similar technique with my new crest save file. I am definitely going to use the tool mod to put some, you know, decorative buildings around the save file itself so that it could actually feel like it's in Japan. In this case, I wanted to hide the palm trees. Uh, I did the best I could, but you can still see bits and pieces of them peeking out unfortunately. But there's really not much we can do because we can't move the pre-existing lots. Luckily we did get a lot of decorative building shells from Snowy Escape so it wasn't that hard to make this place look like a legit area in Japan I guess. 
So yeah, I think that's pretty much all there is to this build. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please let me know in the comments. I love hearing what you guys have to say every build. I definitely look forward to the comments every time I put out a build. So hopefully you enjoyed this one as well. Other than that, I think I'm going to go now. Thank you so much for watching. You all have an awesome, awesome, awesome day. Enjoy the rest of the video and I will see you guys next time. Bye bye. Yeah.